All right, I want to welcome those that are joining us now by TV, by radio, and by live streaming. Uh, and if you're listening by radio, you can go to www.theshepherdshouse.net and get the entire uh, program, the entire service, rather. Amen. We're just a, well, just a little bit later getting started with the live streaming, folks, uh, today because uh, the Lord has uh, done gave us a good service already this morning, and we've already had one saved this morning. Amen. Praise God. Yes, amen. Praise the Lord. We're getting ready to baptize two here in a few minutes, and we'll get this young man. Uh, he wants to wait till his dad's here next week or whenever he gets back, so we'll get him baptized a little bit later. Thankful for those that are being born into the kingdom of God. Amen. Time's running out. If you're not ready to meet God, you better be getting ready. People are dying right and left everywhere. Amen. Uh, tragedies and cancer and heart attacks and different things, and we need to make sure that we're prepared to meet God because we never know when the number's going to roll up and it's going to be our number. It's going to be our time. It's appointed unto man once to die, and after death is the judgment. Amen. All right, in St. Luke's Gospel, starting in chapter number 7, St. Luke, chapter number 7, starting in verse number 36. I want to read a few verses of Scripture the Lord's laid on my heart today, and I'm just going to preach a simple message uh, for us to understand and to hear from heaven and to see the heart of God. Amen. And how wonderful, loving that God is. Amen. I'm thankful that He is a God that understands and a God that will help us no matter what situation that we may have got into, he can get us out of that. Thank God for that. All right, Luke chapter, St. Luke chapter 7, verse 36 says, And one of the Pharisees desired him that he would eat with him. And he went into the Pharisee's house and sat down to meet. And behold, a woman in the city, which was a sinner, when she knew that Jesus said it meet, in the Pharisee's house brought an alabaster box of ointment and stood at his feet behind him weeping and began to wash his feet with tears and did wipe them with the hairs of her head and kissed his feet and anointed them with the ointment. Now when the Pharisee which had bidden him saw it, he spake within himself, saying, This man, if he were a prophet, would have known who... And what manner of woman this is that toucheth him, for she is a sinner. And Jesus answering said unto him, Simon, I have somewhat to say unto thee. And he saith, Master, say on. There was a certain creditor which had two debtors. The one owed him five hundred pence and the other fifty. And when they had paid, had nothing to pay, he frankly forgave them both. Tell me, therefore, which of them will love him most? Simon answered and said, I suppose that he to whom he forgave most. And he said unto him, Thou hast rightly judged. And he turned to the woman and said unto Simon, Seest thou this woman? I entered into thine house, and thou gavest me no water for my feet, but she hath washed my feet with tears and wiped with her with the hairs, wipe them with the hairs of her head, excuse me. Thou gavest me no kiss, but this woman, since the time that I came in, hath not ceased to kiss my feet. My head with oil, thou didst not anoint, but this woman hath anointed my feet with ointment. Wherefore I say unto thee, her sins, which are many, are forgiven, for she loved much, but to whom little is forgiven, the same loveth little. And he said unto her, Thy sins are forgiven. And they that said it meet with him began to say within themselves, Who is this that forgiveth sins also? And he said to the woman, Thy faith has saved thee. Go in peace. 
Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we come before you once again this day, thanking you for this opportunity, Lord, to read your word, to preach your word, to hear your word. And Father, we're so thankful you gave me, Lord, this chance, Lord, to minister to people all around the world. I pray, God, you would touch those, uh, Father, Lord, that are lost and deal with their hearts. And Father, I pray, God, to cause them to understand that time's running out. We're getting closer to the end. And Lord, time's running out for others, Lord. Uh, Father, that will die with natural causes. I pray, Father, to cause them to understand that, the Lord, they don't have to miss heaven. They don't have to be cast into darkness. They don't have to feel the flames of hell. There's been a way made through a loving Savior who gave his life on the cross to set us all free from our sins uh, to whomsoever that would would call on the name of the Lord and they can be saved. I pray, Father, once again to anoint me without the anointing of the Holy Ghost. I know that all that's said and done would be void and it would be in vain. But through your power, through your spirit, we know, Lord, you're able to touch our hearts, touch our lives. You're able to move, Lord, in any situation, every situation. And, Lord, that you're able, Father, to touch every person's heart, regardless of who that we are, Lord. And we just pray, Father, to touch every person that's here and all that's joining us, Lord, from wherever, Lord. We thank you and we praise you this day, asking you once again for the anointing in the mighty name of Jesus. We humbly pray and ask these things in Jesus' precious name. Amen. The title of the message today is From the Heart of a Sinner from the heart of a sinner. This woman had heard that Jesus was gone to be a guest with a man who was a Pharisee. The Pharisees was the keeper of the law. Those that uh, strained at trying to keep the rules, but they didn't live right themselves. In other words, they were hypocrites. In fact, Jesus called them hypocrites. And today, you would identify a hypocrite as someone that's playing church, someone that is pretending. Uh, yesterday, my little grandson uh, sent me a message on uh, his dad's cell phone. He pretended did uh, to be his daddy and he said uh, could you get uh, uh, the uh, Trenton uh, some worms for him to fish and uh, I sent him back a message and I said yeah I guess I can and later on I got the worms and I sent him back a message and I said I got Trenton his worms tell him I got him a box of worms uh, he said he must have got my phone and ask you for the worms. But he uh, he was pretending to be uh, his daddy, pretending to send me a message because uh, he'd have more power behind it. Uh, amen. There's always going to be somebody, amen, pretending. Uh, amen. But the, but the Lord knows our heart. Uh, he knows exactly who that we are. There was a woman here uh, that was a sinner. Uh, she had heard that Jesus went to be with this man uh, that was a hypocrite. This man that was a Pharisee, this one that was so strong in religious rules, uh, amen, that he could not see uh, the uh, character of God. He could not understand, uh, amen, the mercy and forgiveness uh, that God gives to those uh, that has made bad choices, uh, to those that were, uh, that maybe has done things, uh, amen, that's not exactly the way that they should be. Others that just bluntly, has sinned because they just really didn't have any fear of God. But this woman, the Bible says, was a sinner. You can look in the commentaries, and some of the commentary writers will say that she was believed to be a prostitute. Other writers will say they believe that she was just a, a woman that was full of sin and done a lot of ungodly things. We don't know, but the Bible plainly says she was a sinner. And we know that all sinners are on their way to hell until they get born again. Amen, but she heard about Jesus. Amen, being down at the Pharisee's house. So she got her 
uh, 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 ointment, uh, uh, alabaster box of ointment, uh, amen, which was worth about a year's wages. Uh, and she took that uh, there to where Jesus was, uh, and, and she broke that uh, box of ointment uh, and began to anoint him, uh, amen. She stood behind him, uh, pointed on his feet, uh, and then she washed his feet, uh, amen, with her tears uh, and took her hair and dried his feet, uh, amen, with the hair of her head, uh, amen, showing humility. That's how sorry she was uh, for her sins uh, and how she came to worship uh, and to identify who Jesus was uh, and how needful that she had was of Jesus uh, uh, becoming into her heart, uh, into her life. Uh, amen. Before we ever find the Lord, uh, we're going to have to realize that we need him. We're going to have to realize uh, that we're living in sin, uh, that we have no hope, uh, that our life is messed up. Uh, maybe your marriage is messed up. Maybe your checking account got messed up. Amen. Maybe your job has got messed up. Maybe you're just messed up all over and all around. Amen. Made bad choices. Maybe you've got some addictions that you need to get rid of that's bogging you down, that's hurting your health. And you know it's going against you. Oh, let me tell you. Amen, you may be having a court date coming up for some of you watching my television here just real soon. And you know that if you ever needed a Savior, you need him right now because you realize, amen, you're getting older now. Amen, and listen, you can die when you're young. I've done the funeral of an infant that was two months old one time. Amen, I see people dying of all ages. It doesn't matter what age that you are. You could be a teenager and be running, playing basketball, Ball, or running playing football or running playing uh, uh, soccer or some other game or doing uh, you know track or whatever and have a brain aneurysm uh, or an aneurysm in your heart uh, that you've had since birth uh, that's never been detected uh, and you could fall dead uh, amen on the track uh, amen jumping over some hurdles uh, we never know when we're going to leave this world uh, amen but you know if you're not ready to meet God uh, that you need him uh, and as soon as we come to the realization, uh, amen, that we're lost, uh, it's time to do something about it. Uh, when you come to the realization, uh, amen, that you've not been born again, you've never went to an altar, you've never asked Jesus to come into your heart, uh, amen, then it's time, uh, amen, to make that decision uh, and come to the Lord. Uh, you can put him off, uh, amen, all that you want to. Uh, you can even put him off uh, and you can go to hell if that's what you really want to do. I sure would want to go there when the price has done been paid for. Amen. It's free salvation to whomsoever will. Let him come and drink of the water of life freely. I'm thankful today for the free gift of God. Amen. Salvation. I'm thankful today for his mercy. This woman came and worshiped him from the heart of a sinner. Here she came. No, she wasn't worthy. Amen. But it didn't matter whether she is worthy or not. She loved him. And she knew, amen, that he had the hope of eternal life. That he had the hope, amen, of getting her out of the situation. In the eyes of of people. Uh, she wasn't uh, uh, very clean. Uh, in the eyes of society, uh, she would have been a reject, uh, one that wasn't looked upon. Uh, amen. Very well. You may have done some things uh, and had some people in church. Uh, amen. Turn their nose up at you. Amen. You may have had a preacher somewhere. Turn their nose up at you or a deacon. Turn their nose or somebody. Amen. Sized you up one side and down the other. You may have visited a church somewhere and they saw a tattoo on your arm and they give you the evil eye. Amen. You, you may have went somewhere. Uh, amen. They found out. Uh, amen. That you'd had a marriage years ago that went bad uh, and, and you'd uh, uh, got remarried and they may have turned their nose up at you. Uh, amen. But I want you to know there's a Savior today. Amen. That loves you. Uh, it don't matter what you've done. Uh, it doesn't matter what uh, sin you've committed. Uh, it doesn't matter what past. Uh, amen. That you've had today. Uh, God's not looking at your past. Uh, he holds your future and he's saying, 
He holds your life in his hands. Amen. You've got an opportunity. Amen. To come out of that hole. Amen. To come out of that darkness. Amen. To come out of that place. Amen. Where you've been and go to the place. Amen. That God's prepared for you. Amen. In your life. He wants everybody to be free. He wants everybody to feel his presence. He wants everybody to enjoy his love. Amen. And to feel the presence of God when we stop and worship him. Amen. She didn't turn somersaults. She didn't turn flips. She was so broken. I could just see her. All she could do is cry and bring the only thing that she had. Amen. An alabaster box of ointment. She probably thought, Lord, I don't have a farm to give you. I don't have a house to give you. I don't have a camel to give you. I don't have anything like that to give you. But I've got this alabaster box of ointment. I took all my money and I went and I bought it so that I could uh, put it upon you to honor you because you're a good master, a God that's full of love. I recognize that you are the Son of God and you are my hope. And the only thing I know to do is come in behind you. I can't face you because I've sinned. I can't look at you because I'm too ashamed of what I've done. Oh, Lord, so many people has hurt me and pushed me back and said I was worthless and said I was no good. Why, even the Pharisee said, Lord, uh, if you knew who this person was and what kind of woman she was, if you was really a prophet, you would know she was a sinner. Oh, but Jesus said, Simon, i got something to say to you. He said, Master, say on. And he told him about the two debtors. And he said, which one do you think forgave the most when neither one could pay? He said, I suppose the one that owed the most. Oh, but listen. See, the greater the sin, the greater the victory. Amen, the greater the sin, amen, the greater the release of the Spirit, amen, when he pulls those sins away. I remember the day that I got saved, I felt so dirty, I felt so ashamed, amen, I got out of the bathtub, bathtub got down on my knees, water running everywhere, I didn't take time to even get a towel. I was under conviction, shaking under the presence of God is God uh, called me to preach there in that bathtub that day is I spoke out, just spoke out. Amen, didn't really know. Amen, anybody's gonna hear me. I was in a bathtub. And I said, what have I got to do? I've done everything I know to do to take care of my wife and my little boy. Jeremy was just a baby then or just a little boy then. And I don't, I've done everything I know to do. I'm working myself to death. But I'm miserable. What is it I got to do? And I heard an audible voice in that bathroom say, Preach. And I shook all over, scared to death because I never heard a voice like that before. I said, oh, I ain't no shape to preach. And he didn't argue with me. Amen. He knew I wasn't in no shape. He knew I needed a Savior. He knew that I had sin in my life. Amen. That I was in bad shape. Amen. I was honorary. Amen. I was angry at the world. I was bitter at the world. Amen. I got out of that bathtub. I said, oh, I don't know how to pray. I don't know how to talk. And I just said, Lord, if you'll forgive me of my sins, I'll preach. It don't matter what it is. I can't take this anymore. And oh, it felt like a covey of birds flew out of my chest. It felt like uh, that somebody lifted a 100-pound feed sack off of both shoulders. I, I thought, whoo, whoo, wow, it's good. I'm free. All of that sin, all of that guilt, all of that shame, all of that anger, all of that bitterness, it was lifted out. It's gone now. And I've never felt nothing like this before. I know that I'm free. Praise God, I'm thankful for that. Amen, this woman came to him. Amen, a, a broken, a weeping, a, and he came in behind her. Come here and help me a minute, John. Come here and help me a minute. You, you want to be on TV for years. Turn around here, let everybody see you. He's going to play the part of Jesus and stand still for a minute. Here come this woman. Thank you, Lord. You ain't even going to know I'm here. But if I could just get out here and just take my tears and just wipe your feet a little bit with the tears on my coming off my face. Lord, if I could just <laughs> clean your feet. Let me take the hair and on my head and let me 
drag your feet now, picking up one at a time. Lord, let me clean you up real good because you've been out on that dusty road. I'm not even worthy to look at you because I'm such a sinner. I'm ashamed of my life. And nobody wants to look at me. I'm rotten. I'm no good. I deserve hell. I need to die and be punished for what I've done. But, Lord, I love you. You are a good God. Oh, let me worship you. Go ahead and sit down. Oh, and listen, uh, Jesus turned and looked at that woman and said, Woman, your sins are forgiven. Go in peace. Oh, I'm thankful today that there's a God, amen, that's full of love. How many has been set free from your sins? Man, didn't it feel good? Amen, when you went to the altar and just cried out to the Lord, you know you didn't deserve it. You know that you were scared to death. You knew that you didn't know how to pray. But see, God's not looking for pretty words. He's looking for a broken heart and a dirty heart. He's looking for a life, amen, that's all messed up. He's looking for some somebody, amen, that's a piece of junk, amen, in the eyes of the world, amen, he's the best dumpster diver, amen, that ever dumped, uh, dived into a dumpster, thank God he got me one day, amen, I was full of uh, uh, trash, amen, uh, garbage is all that I was, amen, and he picked me up, oh, he's going to make a husband out of me. Amen, better than what I had been. Uh, he's going to turn me into a daddy. Amen, instead of a male that knew how to breed. Uh, amen, that's another sermon for another time. Uh, he was going to turn me into somebody. Amen, to preach the gospel. Uh, amen, to be respected. Uh, amen, listen, he's going to change my life. Uh, amen, take bitterness away. Uh, take anger away. Uh, take shame away. Uh, amen, and let me hold my head up uh, and praise the God of my salvation. Uh, amen, let me step high. In his love. I was sharing this this week and again this morning and uh, probably Sunday school. Uh, you know, when I got saved, it didn't only change my life. You know, it wasn't but just, uh, I think the next day, I, I was getting ready to go to work and I was rushing around and Jenny, my wife, has gone on to be with the Lord now. She was still in the bed and I happened to notice she was crying. I said, what's wrong? She said, tell me again. what it felt like. She said, I went to the Baptist church and I went up and shook hands with the preacher, but something's not right in my life. I ain't got what you've got. Tell me again what happened. And I said, I may be late for work, but I'm going to tell you. And I told her again how he felt. And she said, I ain't got that yet. I said, honey, I ain't got time to stay here with you. I'm going to be late for work. You just pray. When I get in this evening, we'll talk some more. She said, all right. I'll come home from work that evening. I went into the living room where she was sitting. I said, did you talk to the Lord? She said, huh, huh. I said, how is it now? She said, I got it. <laughs> Praise God. She said, I got it now. She said, just a few minutes after you left to go to work, she said, I got it. Oh, listen, I'm thankful. Amen, it changed our lives. It changed our marriage. Amen, listen, we stayed 46 years with one another until she graduated this land of sin and sorrow and went home to be with the Lord, waiting for me to come, amen, on down the road sometime, amen, when I've done all the preaching I'm supposed to do and won all the souls I'm supposed to do and I've met all the things that God's got for me to do, went to all the countries that he wants me to go to, he'll take me home, amen. I'm thankful today for what I feel and I'm thankful from the heart of a sinner Worship, amen, from the heart of a sinner, amen, came a praise. Hey, if we get these moss back, Christians to get up out of their seats, amen, and praise God, wouldn't we have church? Woo-wee, man, if we just got people, amen, that had the same attitude that a sinner had, I came unworthy, but I've got to praise him because he's so good. I've got to praise him because he died to set me free from my sins. I've got to praise him in the only way that I know to praise him. I can't confront him because I feel too small, amen. Some says I'm gonna run and jump into heaven. I don't know how it'll be when we get there. I can see myself crawling. 
up to Jesus and said, Lord, I'm not worthy to even loosen the latchet on your shoes. Lord, I'm not even worthy to look up at you because you're so wonderful and so holy and so glorious. But let me worship you. Let me thank you for what you've done on the cross because somewhere in this big place, I've got a mansion waiting for me. Somewhere in this place, I've got a home of eternal rest. Somewhere in this place, in this big city, I'll have a part to play somewhere because of what you did on the cross. Lord, let me worship you. From the heart of a sinner came worship. From the heart of a sinner came praise. And why can't the church, amen, praise the Lord? Why can't we, amen, get into the a mind of praise? Man, when that young boy got saved this morning, it tore me up. I thought, praise God, I'm thankful. God's in the saving business. Amen, the Lord went to dealing with him. No doubt been dealing with him all week through Bible school through vacation Bible school that ended last night. This morning, he couldn't take it anymore. Amen, that tender heart and the Holy Spirit uh, tugging at his heart. He had to go and ask Jesus to come into his heart. Uh, I'm thankful that he did. There's others here today that's a lot older than him. Amen, that needs to get saved. Amen. See, it's with a broken heart and a contrite spirit. Amen. That God comes rushing. Amen. To the need. When we realize, Lord, I'm unworthy, but I need you. Lord, would you come into my heart? See, it doesn't take fancy words. All you have to do is just say, Lord, I'm missing something. There's something these other people's got. I can see them rejoicing. I can see them crying. I can see the the glow on their face. I know there's something that's real. I know they've got something that I don't have. And I want me some of that. I want something in my heart that I know it is real. I want to know that everything that is okay in my heart and that there's no doubt in my mind that now I'm ready to meet you. Oh, that woman, my, my, what a story in the Word of God. Uh, She didn't come saying anything. She didn't have anything to say. She didn't know what to say. She just came to him, amen, broken, and just done the only thing she knew to do. She probably had, no doubt, the servant's heart. See, we've we've got some people that that can play instruments that are lost, they need to get saved so they can come here and play for us because we need them. We got some, uh, you know, worship leaders, you know, that needs to come here and help us, and all they need to do is turn from their drugs, turn from their alcohol, turn from their wicked lifestyle, and turn to Jesus and let him wash away their sins. Amen. Jesus is the best one i ever known to take a prostitute and make a Sunday school teacher out of them. Amen, take a wine bibber and make a preacher out of them. Take a whoremonger, amen, make a deacon out of them. Amen, that's the kind of God that we serve. Amen, the Lord can take someone, amen, that's been one of the biggest addicts, amen, in the countryside to make a prayer warrior out of them. Amen, somebody can play the drums. Amen, someone, amen, that can testify and just tell the world, I once was lost, but now I'm found. I once was blind, but now I can see. I once had no hope, but I've got a life now, amen, and something uh, to be proud of, uh, and something that I can build upon, uh, amen, and something, uh, amen, I can do for the Lord, uh, because everybody has something to do for the Lord, amen, did you notice the word said that not many mighty, not many noble are called, Uh, amen, God goes right down in the scum area, (laughs) <laughs> amen, for the perfect candidates, amen, to become preachers and deacons and prayer warriors and Sunday school teachers, amen, God takes, uh, amen, the, the junk, uh, amen, that the world's rejected, uh, amen, and says, let me have them, <laughs> let me change them, let me make something out of them, let me show you my power, see, it, it, it wouldn't take much power to take somebody that was always good, that never had sinned, and make something good out of them because they're already pretty good. But see, when you get the lowest that there is and you lift them up to a high spot, you've done something. And that's what God does. He takes us from where we were 
to a better place. I'm not going to preach for a long time. I feel like I've uh, minded the Lord. It's going to be a short message today. I think we need more time to look at this altar up here and to think about our sins and think about the things that we've done and uh, think about uh, the times that we should have been worshiping. Instead, we had CNN News or Fox News on our mind instead of worshiping. And we fell in love with the cell phone. I've been doing some pretty good preaching here the last few minutes. Now I'm going to meddle. Amen. Spend about 80 hours a week on a cell phone and one hour a week in church, and you gripe over that. Oh, my goodness, it's after 12 before we got out. <laughs> I could have had 81 hours on my cell phone this week, but I sure do love the Lord. Is that right? You're bad as my grandson, pretending to be his daddy. Amen. Pretending to love the Lord. You tell yourself that, it'll make you feel good. But see, do you really love the Lord? What if you gave? What if you gave up? What have you done? Did you come to worship him? Did you come to lift his name up? Whoo, man, it's been good. We didn't have one saved before I started preaching this morning. And, man, I, I've had me a time preaching. I'm about ready to shout. And I'm going to shut this off here in just a minute and give everybody a chance to pray. If you're watching my television, you need to pick up the cell phone or your house phone. You need to give us a call. Let us pray for you. Amen. If you're watching in Chicago at 3 o'clock in the morning, wait till after daylight. And give us a call. Amen. And I'll be glad to pray for you. You'll still be lost at daylight. And I'll be awake enough I can pray. Amen. I get called sometimes at 3 o'clock in the morning. I say, Phew. amen. Call me after daylight where I can talk to you. But if you're here this morning and you've got a need of any kind, you come right. And let's stand together. I want to say goodbye to the TV and radio and live streaming folks. I'm just going to mind the Lord. <laughs>